All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Diabetes Wellness Webinar Series and happy World Diabetes Day. Today is November 14th, and this is the uh, birthday of Dr. Frederick Bantine. Uh, he co-discovered insulin in 1922, along with his colleague, Charles Best. And so every year on November 14th, um, the International Diabetes Community celebrates World Diabetes Day. It's the largest global awareness campaign for diabetes. And it's really, it's just a day to honor, you know, all the contributions and advancements in diabetes care, raise awareness. And it's just a fun day for the diabetes community um, to celebrate living well with diabetes. So I'm Erin Hodgson. I'm a registered dietitian and diabetes educator here at Stanford. And I'm just really honored to be here with all of you on this special day, uh, along with our wonderful guest presenter and my colleague, Gina Milano Ringelstein. Our topic this evening is um, Wholesome Harvest, Elevating Thanksgiving with Healthy Side Dishes. So if you have questions during the, uh, the presentation, you can add them to the Q&A section, which is located at the bottom of your screen. Gina will answer questions uh, throughout uh, and at the end of the webinar. This will be recorded and we will post it on the Stanford Health Library under the Diabetes Care Program. And there you can also find um, an archive of you know, previous webinars. So I will uh, add the link in the chat. So join me in welcoming Gina. She's a registered dietitian, nutritionist and board certified specialist in obesity and weight management. She's been part of the Stanford healthcare family for five years. As a clinical dietitian at the Stanford Lifestyle Weight Management Center, Gina is dedicated to guiding patients on their wellness journeys, uh, providing individualized nutrition plans and practical strategies to support weight loss and lasting lifestyle changes. Her approach is centered around helping individuals balance their personal and professional lives uh, while achieving sustainable wellness goals and building healthy habits for the long term. So Gina has put together a really fun and informative cooking demonstration um, where we're going to reimagine classic Thanksgiving sides with a healthy twist and discover innovative, re innovative recipes and um, with clever ingredient swaps. So um, creating some delicious dishes that prioritize nutrition without sacrificing the flavors that uh, make Thanksgiving special. So... I will hand it over to you, Gina. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me today. Um, happy World Diabetes Day. This is just such a great day to connect with all of you. And of course, happy November and the month of being thankful and thanksgiving. Um, this is a time I'm always super grateful, not only for this wonderful Stanford community, but having opportunities like this to connect with all of you over one of my favorite things, which is food. And so like Erin said, today is all about wholesome harvest. We're going to talk about two, two different dishes that are sides that whether you're going to a Thanksgiving dinner, a potluck, you're going to have time with friends and family over the next couple weeks, maybe these are going to be two recipes that you can go ahead and try and feel reassured that they're tasty, delicious, nutritious, and balanced. That often can be um, a big concern and struggle for many of us when the holidays start to roll around is how am I going to enjoy my favorite foods while also still being mindful of my health and wellness goals. And so these two recipes today will do just that. So our first recipe for today is going to be a play on the classic green bean casserole. I know many of you may also see this at your classic Thanksgiving table, but we're going to switch things up a bit with the deconstructed green bean casserole. So that will be our first recipe. And then our second recipe is going to be a delicata squash with a maple tahini dressing and some fresh pomegranates on top. So lots of fun. Um, like Erin said, as I'm going through how to assemble everything, Everything and preparing everything. We are going to be using the oven tonight. So if you have questions while we're going through things, um, we'll do our best to answer those. And then of course, try to get to everything at the end. 
So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with that deconstructed green bean casserole first. So I just have a baking sheet here and the oven is preheated to 400 degrees. Now you'll notice I kind of have this fun little silicone mat here. This is just one of my favorite tricks to make the cleanup process easy. Sometimes that can be a huge barrier when we think about cooking is uh, all the dishes that I have to do. So you can use a silicone baking mat. You can find those at most stores, somewhere like Target, Costco. You can also order them online at Amazon. Walmart will have them as well. Or heck, you could just do a little bit of foil or you could do some parchment, whatever you have available. So let's get started. So we have our baking sheet here. And we're going to start off with some green beans. So this is just from Trader Joe's, a nice little prepackaged option. This is 12 ounces. So if you were getting this from a farmer's market or another grocery store where you're kind of pulling it out from a larger bin, 12 ounces is what we're going to go with here. So we're going to make this super simple and easy. The first step is literally dumping this green bean bag onto the baking sheet as such. And I'm just gonna spread this out. You can kind of see it's all kind of um, even on the baking sheet. It won't stay like this when we bake it in the oven. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna doctor this up with some flavor. So I already have here mixed up for us in a mixing bowl here. We have um, olive oil and you also could do avocado oil depending on your preference. I like a little bit of the olive oil flavor. So if that's not your preferred flavor, you definitely could opt for a lighter option like avocado oil. I also have some black pepper, some salt, and then we also have a little bit of just black pepper and salt. Really simple for this one. So this is gonna be our first marinade here. So I'm just gonna pour this over our green beans. And then when you think about green bean casserole, of course green beans, beans are the star of the show, but oftentimes there's those little French onions on the top or some kind of onion component. And so onions can be a little pungent, sometimes a little bit too strong. So I'm going to go with a shallot. And so all I've done, I've taken one large shallot here, I've peeled it and I've sliced it into really thin slices. So it's going to be easy to eat and it's going to roast up and get nice and caramelized, which adds a really nice flavor. So I'm just going to sprinkle this over the top of our green beans, everything prepped and ready to go there. And then I'm just gonna toss everything together, making it super simple. So you just wanna make sure as you're tossing it, get in there with your hands. Of course, you could put gloves on, you could do tongs if you're not really interested in getting in there with your hands, totally up to you. But I like this method because it helps make sure that everything is evenly coated. Um, that's also why I often pre-mix any kind of oil and spices together and you mix it before you end up putting it on your veggies rather than putting in your oil and then the seasonings. I just find that it really melts together nicely. So once all of this is nice and combined, I'm actually gonna push it to the other half of the baking sheet. And we wanna leave a little bit of room here that you can see. And that's where we're gonna have a little bit of fun with some crispy toppings um, that also packs some protein. When we think about that classic green bean casserole, it's typically French's onion, some cream of um, mushroom soup, and then some green beans beans and there's not a lot of protein in there and especially when we're thinking about optimizing our blood sugar control and we're maybe going to be enjoying those other favorite carbohydrates like pumpkin pie mashed potatoes stuffing having that other protein content there along with your fiber that's going to help slow your digestion minimize that blood sugar spike so this is kind of going to be a nice way to go about it so what we're going to do is i'm going to take my festive holiday napkin or towel here and put that to the side our next crispy option, we're gonna use some prosciutto. Now, this is my preferred protein option here, just to kind of make it flavorful, fun, it's the holidays. You, of course, could choose something leaner. You could always do some ground turkey that you heat up in a skillet, but for this, I'm gonna keep it really simple with a one sheet pan recipe. So what I'm gonna do, this is about four ounces of prosciutto, and I'm gonna take each slice here and make little prosciutto nests. So you're simply just folding it together and kind of creating little nests just like this. And you put it directly on to the baking sheet. And these are gonna get really nice and crispy when you put it in the oven. And that'll create a nice flavor. It also brings a nice um, combination of things to your green beans as well. So we're just gonna fold all of those up 
And again, if you're a vegetarian and this is not your favorite option, you could definitely skip the prosciutto and just stick with the green beans and the shallots. That would be totally okay. Do a couple more here. We're just going to fold all of our little pieces just like that. And then our next step, step we're going to add another level of flavor. So in addition to our delicious prosciutto here, we're also going to incorporate some fresh garlic. Of course, you can definitely use dried herbs and spices and things like garlic and onion. But for recipes like this, I often find that fresh is best. It really brings another aromatic flavor, makes it nice and delicious. However, raw garlic isn't the most appetizing. Tithing, we also want to make sure that it doesn't get burned when it, we're cooking, which can easily happen, especially when you're prepping for something like a holiday party or Thanksgiving. We get distracted with talking with someone else, and sometimes we might lose track of where we're at in the cooking process. So we have all of our prosciutto nests on the baking sheet here with our beautiful green bean, so the garlic. Our next step is I have four cloves of garlic here, and what I've gone ahead and done, I've cut off the top so the inside of the garlic is exposed, but you want to keep the skin on. And what we're going to do, we're going to take some foil, and we're going to put our garlic cloves here right in the center of the foil, just as you see it. I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil, just enough to get some lubrication onto the foil here. A little bit of salt and pepper just for some added flavor. And then we're going to fold this up into a little ball and put it right on the baking sheet. What's going to happen is that when we put this garlic on the baking sheet into the oven, this is actually going to steam the garlic and it almost creates another caramelized essence to the dish. And we're going to actually use this garlic in the sauce that kind of gives us that creamy feel of a classic bean green bean casserole. Um, when we make the sauce, we're going to use that garlic there. So this is going to go right on the baking sheet. And there you have it. This side dish is pretty much ready to go. We're going to put this into the oven on the middle rack and we're going to bake it for 20 minutes. So I'm going to put it in the oven as we see. And then I'm going to set our timer so I do not forget that it's in there. And as we do that, we're ready to go. Now, the creaminess of a green bean casserole, that's kind of that nice texture, that nice mouth feel. But again, maybe it doesn't really pack as much nutrition when you look at the back of a soup can that's a little bit on the creamier side. So for our own option, I am going to make a high protein creamy sauce. And just as a a reminder when we're putting our baking sheet into the oven that's 400 degrees for 20 minutes and everything's just going to go right on in now for this creamy sauce we're going to start with the creamy base is going to be a cottage cheese now you may have all heard about the re-essence or re-emergence of cottage cheese over the last couple years but this is a great way to give you a nice amount of protein it's minimal in calories in comparison to something like classic cream or creme fraiche or half and half, and it's going to double the protein content, which again, is going to be optimal for that blood sugar control, which is awesome, and satiety power when you think about moving from meal to meal. So we're going to start with about a half a cup of cottage cheese, and then we want to create a little bit more of an elegance to this creamy sauce. So that's where we're going to come in with some goat cheese. And so goat cheese is just a nice mouthfeel, kind of has a little bit of a tang to it. And we're going to mix about um, a fourth of a cup of our goat cheese with our cottage cheese. Now, I've already pre-made this sauce to avoid you listening to a big blender, but everything is just going to go into a big blender just as you see it. So right now, this has the half a cup of cottage cheese, a fourth cup of goat cheese. Now, if you aren't a big dairy fan, you could definitely do a lactose-free version of a cottage cheese. If you're also just not a huge fan of cottage cheese, you could switch that over to a plain Greek yogurt, anywhere from zero to 2% fat for this dish and kind of giving that creaminess and that richness. Going with a 2% fat of a plain Greek yogurt would be great. They also have those available in a lactose-free version. If not, you can also then switch to a dairy-free option of plain, either coconut milk or almond milk-based uh, yogurt. Really just depends on your preferences. But I'm going with the dairy option here just to impact the protein content for this dish. 
Hey, Gina. Um, yeah. Did you, um, we may have missed it, the temperature for the oven, somebody's asking. Um, yeah, so the temperature for the oven is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. Yeah. I'm loving all of these um, different creamy options and substitutions. Lots of great ideas for everyone. Thank you. Yeah, it's always good to have options, right? Especially if we know maybe different family members are coming over or we're not quite sure what everyone's preference is in. This is ways you can customize it to make it work for you and maybe anyone else that you're dining with. So in addition to our cottage cheese and our goat cheese, we're then going to add um, some nutmeg. Gives it a nice nutty flavor. Also a little bit of sage. These are two classic um thanksgiving recipe or thanksgiving flavors and i really like how it kind of creates that warmth so we'll add that straight into the blender now because the goat cheese and the cottage cheese are a little bit thicker we do need to add some water so we'll add a little bit of water in here and then to help balance out the creaminess of the cheese and some of these earthier flavors with the nutmeg and the dried sage i'm going to add a little bit of fresh lemon now it's not really lemon season in the in the fall as we speak so what I like to do to try to get a little bit more juice out of it is just roll it just like this. And this helps all of the juice come to the center. And if you're not wanting to buy fresh lemon, you of course could opt for a pre-store-bought lemon juice. That would be okay too. So all of this goes into the blender. And once our um, green beans are done roasting, you would also add that fresh garlic. Now I just whipped this batch up to show you what it looks like um, when you put all of the ingredients together, but I also made this a couple days ago just to give it a whirl. And this little version of this creamy dressing that goes on top has the roasted garlic in it, which it really makes a difference. It just brings the whole dish together. So while we wait for our green beans and prosciutto to keep cooking, we're gonna move on to our second dish. And I know there was a question in the chat box I saw very briefly about um, the recipes for download. Um, yes, I will send all of these recipes um, to our health library team so it will be available. Um, and these are my personal creations, so you can't find them anywhere else. Um, so I'm happy to share them with you and hopefully they end up on your Thanksgiving table. All right, so we'll put everything aside for this deconstructed green bean casserole. And now we're going to move on to our roasted delicata squash with a maple tahini dressing. And so um, I'm super excited about this recipe because delicata squash is in season. If you're not familiar with delicata squash, you may have maybe even seen this at the grocery store. I feel like they're on display or even at restaurants when they're putting a nice tablescape together when you're dining out in the fall. This is a brother or sister, however you wanna think about it, to the acorn squash. So if you have a hard time finding delicata squash, it should be available at most grocery stores. I picked this one up at Trader Joe's. You could substitute it with um, the acorn squash, that would be fine. You also could do butternut squash, but I find that this um, delicata squash and the acorn squash, when you roast it in the oven, it just has a really nice caramelized flavor and it just really is something that almost feels indulgent, but this is very, um, very carb smart. So typically, if you're gonna have a cup of delicata squash, which is a pretty big portion size, if you think about all of the flesh that will be on the inside, that's gonna be about 14 grams of carb hydrate, which is about one serving of a carb. So needless to say, let's get going on the cooking end, shall we? So first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, we're just going to cut up this delicata squash in case you find it this way. Just have a nice sharp knife here. And we're just going to start cutting it into rounds. Now, it has this beautiful inside that you can see. You also can see it usually comes with seeds. So you can easily just take your fingers and kind of remove this as best as you can. Now, what's also great, you might be thinking as you look at this, can I eat the outside, this kind of cool tiger stripe? Yes, you can eat the outside. You don't have to peel it, especially when you roast it in the oven. It really turns nice and soft. So it's going to be delicious and really flavorful. So you definitely can't eat that if you would you know, like. I'm so inspired here. I would not have known that um, 
the the skin is can be it can all just be consumed and it all seems so decadent this is amazing Oh, thank you so much. And I think this is one of the only fall winter squashes like this that you can actually eat the outside. In comparison, something like a butternut squash, it doesn't really taste the same way. Um, so that's why one of the reasons I love it because it's really minimizing the time you spend. Now, of course, like I said, you could buy them whole or we can take a shortcut. And I am all about convenience while not jeopardizing our nutrition and keeping the flavors where we want. So you actually can buy delicata squash already pre-chopped, which is amazing. So again, really just depends on, you might end up spending a little bit more because this is already pre-cut versus you might spend less, but you have to do a little bit more work when it comes to chopping, prepping, et cetera. So for the sake of ease, and as we prep things today, I'm going to use this delicata squash that's already pre-cut. This is a 20 ounce bag. So this is going to be about two and a half of these medium sized delicatas if you're at the grocery store and picking those out. And we're just I'm just going to, again, put that right onto a baking sheet because, again, sheet pan cleanup is so great. Rather than spending time over the stove, trying to multitask while you're doing things in the kitchen, having it all done on a sheet pan can really be a game changer, especially for cleanup, right? That's probably the worst part of cooking is you've enjoyed the delicious food and then it becomes time to have to clean it all up. And that's not as exciting. So I'm going to get our other sheet pan over here. Perfect. Another silicone mat. So we have that ready to go. And then I'm just going to open up. Now, of course, we can do this with scissors, but I'm going to use that knife just again for convenience. And great. And just as a reminder, I did get this delicata squash that was pre-cut at Trader Joe's. That's one of the only places I could find it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if other grocery stores like Whole Foods or Sprouts started to carry it, but this is the one spot consistently. I go in, I walk in, and it's there. So we're just going to, again, dump out our delicata squash. Now, I like to make sure that you kind of lay everything flat, and that's going to make sure that it all gets nice and caramelized on the top. And halfway through the cooking process, you can flip it to get the other side. But again, if you don't do that, it's going to still taste delicious. All right, so we're just kind of arranging everything here on the sheet. I'm also going to just use the couple that I ended up chopping here. And they come in that beautiful ring, so you could keep it like that. But for the sake of ease and beautiful presentation, we're just going to put it right on the baking sheet. Now, once that is there, we're then going to also coat it with some different flavors. Now, because this gives a nice caramelized feel, when I think of fall, I not only think of nutmeg or pumpkin spice or sage like we're using, but cinnamon is one of my favorite spices to not only bake with, but to cook with. So to go over this delicata squash, what I have here is I have two tablespoons of olive oil. Again, if you also have avocado oil or canola oil at home, you definitely could use that. And I've mixed it not only with black pepper and salt, but that ground cinnamon. So I just have everything ready to go. And just like in our other recipe, by combining the oil and the spices before you put it on the veggies, it really just ensures that every inch of the veggies get the flavor that you're hoping for, rather than a few bites with pepper and a few bites with cinnamon. So I'm just going to mix all of this up really well. And then we're just going to drizzle it over the top. Wonderful. Get all the good stuff out of the bottom. And this is where our hands come in place yet again. So we're going to mix everything. Make sure it's all nice and evenly coated. Just be delicious. Okay, so now it is all nice and coated. It smells amazing. I wish you all were here with me in my kitchen. I'm going to be eating a lot of delicata squash tonight. <laughs> so that will be that will be fun. Um, this is all ready to go. Excellent. So that's ready to go. And we're going to actually put that in the oven as well. So it can start roasting and cooking. And again, this is going to go in same temperature, 400 degrees. 
degrees Fahrenheit and about 25 minutes. So just five minutes longer than our green beans and prosciutto that are roasting in there. You also can broil these at the very end if you like them extra crispy. Um, I'm so excited for you all to try this because the outside is just going to be so delightful and yummy. So I'm going to put that in while it's cooking and then we're going to make the sauce that goes on top. So Gina, is um, parchment paper an option to um, use in place of the, the mat? Yes, parchment paper would be a great alternative to the silicone mat. If you don't have parchment paper, you also could do foil. That would be appropriate as well. Um, you also don't have to use anything on the bottom of your baking sheets if you're wanting to avoid things sticking. Oftentimes I'll use a little bit of oil spray just to kind of coat the bottom so that would work as well. I mostly use the silicone mats to avoid a messy cleanup. Um, so again, not mandatory by any means. And uh, somebody great. commented, which I think we can all agree, we're all feeling very hungry now and I mm -hmm. feel like I can almost smell all those delicious spices. Oh, good. I, again, I wish you all could just eat with me. That would be amazing if we could if we could do that. But hopefully this is also inspiring you to try new vegetables like the delicata squash or maybe acorn squash if that's easier for you to find and reimagine these classic dishes. When I also think about Thanksgiving, it seems to be the standard size, right? Maybe stuffing, mashed potatoes, sweet potato casserole and maybe there's just not as many green veggies and oftentimes when the weather starts to change eating a salad or having raw veggies just doesn't feel as warm and comforting and so this is where we're really trying to maximize the nutrition density and also also offer a nice uh, non-starchy veggie side to nicely complement our carbohydrate dense options like stuffing or mashed potatoes excellent so let's start making our dressing that's going to go on the top of our delicata squash. This is going to kind of be a savory sweet combination. So really playing off the natural sweetness that comes from the delicata squash and also that caramelization that's going to make it a little more savory. And we're going to amplify that with a fun dressing. So this is a maple tahini dressing. If you're not familiar with tahini, all tahini is, is just ground sesame seed. It kind of has a nice nutty, aromatic kind of flavor. Um, this is something that once you open it, you do want to keep it in the refrigerator. It's not shelf stable once you've opened it. And so that's an important little storage tip there. What we're gonna do for this dressing is I've added already three tablespoons of tahini to this bowl, as well as um, about a fourth of a cup of some water. Cause I like the marinade or the dressing to be a little bit on the thinner side and a dash of salt. So I'm just gonna start to mix that up here. And tahini is on the thicker side when you start to mix it together, you can see there. So you might even decide I might need more fluid when I get going. Now, aside from the tahini that's in here with water and just a pinch of salt for a little flavor, we want to bring a little bit of acid and sweet. So for our acid component to give it that kick, I'm going to use some balsamic vinegar. Now, if you don't have balsamic vinegar at home, so alternatives would be apple cider vinegar. You also have um, champagne vinegar. Those are very light and they're not going to give you too strong of a, of a flavor. I wouldn't use something like a white vinegar vinegar that'll be too strong and it'll just kind of take away from the flavor. So here we are going to do one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar and I'm just about out. Perfect. I'm going to add that to our dressing and then a little bit of sweetness and you can play with the sweetness combination here. I don't like the dressing to be overly sweet and I'm also just trying to minimize added sugar, but this maple, this is a pure maple syrup, just a little bit of that flavor and that comfort that just screams Thanksgiving. So I'm also gonna do about a tablespoon of maple syrup. I'm gonna add that right on into the tahini. And we're just going to start to mix things together. Now, as you can see, it's getting pretty thick. And by adding more of that liquid with the balsamic, it's becoming a little bit of a less viscous option. Um, so that's going to go really nice. And the longer you let this sit out, typically it starts to get a little bit thicker. So right before serving, if you've made this ahead or you've even made it ahead a couple of days and kept it in the refrigerator, 
mixture, you just want to get it to room temp and add a little bit of water. So that's going to be nice and yummy there. I'll probably add just a little bit of water right before we serve our fun um, delicata squash. So that is the basic of our dressing here. So again, a little bit of salt, a dash of pepper, we can add that as well to taste. I'll kind of taste a little bit and see if we need some. We can do a little bit of pepper and I think it needs just a titch of water. Just a little bit there. And then I'm just gonna get a little bit of water. Just to thin it out just a little bit. And we're gonna set this aside and sprinkle it on top of our squash. So this is ready to go. All right, now the vibrant part. So we have this caramelized, delicious delicata squash with this nutty, sweet uh, dressing on the top. And then I wanna do a little bit of brightness or flavor. So that's where we're gonna enter in pomegranates. A great fall staple, you probably have seen it in tons of salads, um, maybe even baked goods, depending on what you like to do at home. Um, and pomegranates, maybe I don't buy them as often because I often used to think they're going to be such a pain to open. The red juice is going to get everywhere. It's going to be messy. How do I solve that? So the often the next thought is let me buy them when they're already preceded and ready for you to go. Oftentimes those don't really stay fresh very long. So I'm going to teach you a trick to get your pomegranate seeds out in a mess free way. Hopefully I can execute that. And we're almost time for our uh, green beans to be ready too. So perfect timing. Okay, so what we'll need for our pomegranate here, we're just gonna need a cutting board and we're gonna need a bowl of water. This is gonna be the fun trick of how to get the seeds out. So what we're gonna do to go ahead and get started is I'm just going to take this top of the pomegranate. Usually it's flat on one side and it's kind of puckered at the other end. And I'm just very so slightly gonna start to shave that off almost so it's easy for me to peel. You can kind of see it's gonna be easy for me to start to peel it back a little bit, almost like you would an orange or a banana when you're peeling something. And I'm gonna start to expose some of the seeds. And so, I just want to do a little bit to where I can get enough showing. And again, this is where you can use your knife skills a little bit. Take it nice and slow. Start to peel this off a little bit. Oop, our green beans are ready. So I'll pull those out in just a second. But what we're going to do is now that it's exposed, I'm actually going to submerge this in water. Let's make a little bit of a cut there. I'm going to submerge it in water and this is where you start to break it apart and this is where you're going to be able to get the seeds out a little bit easier because it almost reminds me of honeycomb where they you just start to pull the little pockets and it easily starts to come out and by using your fingers and kind of rubbing the seeds in between your thumb and your index you're able to disperse the seeds and then you have seeds that are ready to go we're just going to do that really quick Oh yeah, and see, we have some big chunks. That usually would have taken me forever <laughs> to get them out. So we're just gonna start to slowly break this apart. Come to, ooh, put your goggles on here. Okay, excellent. So now all of the seeds are ready to go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna set some of these aside as we see here in a little bowl, and that's gonna go on the top of our delicata squash. Now you can of course do this all ahead of time, have this ready to go. The best way to store this, they don't last very long. So if you're gonna do this as you're prepping for a holiday event or having people over to your home or bringing it somewhere, I usually say do it the night before and then store in a airtight Tupperware container with a lined piece of something that's going to absorb the liquid to make sure they don't get too slimy. So usually I take a paper towel, just dampen it ever so slightly, and that will help absorb all of the fluid that you have in here with the pomegranate seeds. Great. Get a little bit more here, and then we got to get the green beans. All right. Excellent. I wish you could see all of the, 
the bottom here of all of these different, you can see them all floating around in there. Okay, for the time being, I'll put those to the side. We wanna make sure our green beans don't get too crispy. Let's go ahead and pull these out. Oh my goodness, I wish you all could smell this. It's just absolutely delicious. Now you can see how crispy our prosciutto is. It is completely changed. So those are definitely quite hot. I'm gonna let those cool for just a second. And you also, this would be the perfect time when you're making this yourself. After you've roasted this, you let it cool a little bit, you remove the garlic cloves from the pouches, and you're gonna add that into the blender with your cottage cheese, your goat cheese, your water, your sage, a little nutmeg, the lemon, and you're good to go. I'll just show you this so you know what it looks like. You should be able to kind of pop it out pretty easily, almost like you would um, if you've ever eaten edamame or a snow pea, you can pop the pot out pretty quick. And so as you can see here, look, it's coming out. And there we have steamed, delicious caramelized garlic, and that's gonna go right on in there. So kind of a fun little trick. You all can do that with a head of garlic and use that for different dishes. So for example, if you're not only making this, but maybe you're also making some mashed potatoes and you want to add some garlic, you would take a whole clove, cut off the top of the garlic, and then that way you have lots of garlic, not only to use for your sauce, but you can repurpose that for your garlic mashed potatoes. And that's thinking smarter and not working harder. And we love that, especially for the holidays. So I'm gonna put that to the side. And once this all typically cools, I like to break up the prosciutto, kind of making it almost like prosciutto bits and kind of a nice fun topping. Um, the onions on here have also gotten nice and caramelized. And again, you can kind of see them here, nice and beautiful brown color. Um, again, smelling absolutely delicious. So I'm just gonna kind of move this around and help that kind of start to cool down. And then we're going to grab our sauce and a few other details for the top. There are just so many delicious layers to this recipe. The savory prosciutto and the freshness of the green beans. I can't yeah, wait to try this recipe. Yeah, and I think that's the, the best part about cooking is like layering flavors together. And I think the more we can do this, the more likely we're going to enjoy it, right? Because if we're just going to have some steamed green beans, that may not get us coming back for more, right? And so maybe this will become a way to not only cook green beans during the holiday season, but maybe you find yourself going back to this recipe, editing, adding things to it to make it work for winter, for spring, you name it. So um, I'm so glad that you all are enjoying it from afar. I wish again, it was, was up close. So this is the sauce that we made and with the garlic cloves added. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just move our prosciutto off to the side and have this ready to go. And just as a quick tip, because these are a little hot, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna kind of take some kitchen scissors and cut these up into little pieces. Now, usually once they're cooled enough, you can just tear them apart, one less thing to clean. But this is also a nice way to sure the size is exactly what you want it to be. So I'm just gonna cut these up. Kitchen scissors are one of my favorite kitchen appliances. If you don't have these, I highly recommend investing in them. They really go a long way from cutting green beans, produce, chopping things up, lettuce, lots of things to do it nice and quick. Okay, so we have our prosciutto here. We're done and ready to go. And then we're ready to layer. So let's go ahead and mix all of that around and see it nice and ready to go here. And then I'm going to layer some of our sauce and I'm just gonna kind of drizzle it. So it kind of creates that creamy effect, which is really nice. Again, it's giving you those green bean casserole vibes, but in such a fresh and nutrition, nutritionally dense way. 
Now, we're not gonna stop there. To really bring out the creaminess, the flavor of everything, we're gonna add a little bit of fresh lemon zest. Now, I have this great microplaner. Uh, again, another awesome kitchen tool. It's a great way to zest things. You also can get a classic zester if you would like. And I'm just gonna do the zest of one lemon. And I'm just gonna sprinkle this all over the green beans. And that's just gonna bring a nice fresh of flair, some citrus. It's gonna kind of help balance out those richer tastes. Um, oftentimes we don't have a lot of zesty or citrus-based options around Thanksgiving. So adding in this little touch can really go a long way and make something not feel so heavy. So I have that all there. And then one last piece, when we're thinking about texture in our meals, everything here has been cooked and roasted, so it's a little bit softer. So sometimes when you have soft veggies, you want a little bit of a crunch. It almost makes me think of like when you're eating yogurt and maybe some soft berries, you need some kind of a crunch and that really just makes the moment, right? So what we're gonna do, I have some raw pecans here and you can do this with any kind of nut. Walnuts, almonds would be fine as well. I like pecans because it makes me think of uh, the fall time. It's also, also a sneaky way to get a little bit more protein in. So again, if you're not adding the prosciutto, you'll kind of just use this as another layer. So I'm just gonna kind of, break these up with my hands. Of course, you could rough chop them. You also could buy them pre-chopped, making it really simple. I'm just gonna kind of put it on top. Okay. And there we have it. We have our deconstructed green bean casserole. So delicious. And I think I need to have just a little taste, get a little prosciutto in there, maybe a little pecan, some lemon zest. A small little green bean. That is just so amazing, Gina. Thank you for tasting it for all of us. <laughs> so good. I wish you all were here and so easy to put together, right? I also will say I made this uh, a week or so ago and my husband loved it and said, I think it tastes even better the next day because of all the flavors married together, which is awesome. Okay. We have more comments. It looks delicious. Chef kiss. Oh, definitely. <laughs> there we go. Love it. Love it. So great. So this is our recipe number one. And then we're going to wrap things up really quick with our maple tahini delicata squash. So I know this hasn't been in the oven for exactly the 25 minutes, but I want to bring it out to show you what it looks like in the assembly process so you can recreate at home. Oh my goodness, everyone, you can just, hopefully you can maybe hear the sizzling and I can just smell all that beautiful cinnamon. It just smells absolutely delicious. And so we'll kind of look at the, the back sides here. You can see where it's nice and caramelized. Might be a little harder to see um, on camera there, but it smells gorgeous. Ah, just so good. So now with that tahini dressing, as you can see, it definitely got a little bit um, more on the viscous side. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of use my whisk here and just kind of drizzle it over the top. And that's going to just really create a beautiful option. Yum, yum, yum. Nutty, flavorful. And then last but not least, I'll get a little bit more of our pomegranate seeds here for that ultimate freshness. And we're just gonna sprinkle a bunch of those on top. Yum. And this is gonna pack some antioxidants here with these beautiful pomegranates and colors. This is fiber packed. I'll also say that the delicata squash is one of the higher fiber winter squashes. It's also packed with potassium, which is wonderful. Um, and it's just delicious. So it's going to be a nice alternative to the classic squashes or side at your, at your Thanksgiving. And there we have it, everyone. Again, I wish you could see this, but it's just beautiful. It's creamy. It's roasted. And it's, I know it's going to be a little warm, but I have to just try a little sip. I'm it just is cut so it. beautiful with those bright red pomegranate seeds and the yellow and green. I mean, right there, that's holiday. Yeah. Uh, holidays colors. 
Exactly. And I often think too, like when you have beautiful colors, you're more likely to eat it too, right? So definitely makes a huge difference. Um, and then you can see on the outside, this crust is nice and soft. So like we were saying, it is okay to eat it. Beautiful. It's really hot, but it's beautiful and tasty and delicious. And there we have it, everyone. We have two amazing, wholesome Thanksgiving sides. So much to be grateful for here. Lots of great nutrient density in both of these sides. Lots of fiber, color, antioxidants, getting in some potassium, a little bit of vitamin C, all of those great nutrients that maybe we're not typically getting. And so I can't wait for all of you to make this at home. It's going to be so great seeing you all recreate the recipe. Um, and there we have it. So happy wholesome harvest. Thank you, Gina. What an amazing treat for all of us. Um, I'm definitely, I'm excited to um, incorporate the delicata squash into our, our Thanksgiving feast. Lots of thank yous and excitement coming in um, in the chat. Great. Wonderful. If anybody well, has any, what's that? Oh, I said thank you everyone for joining. It's been great having you. Yeah. So, um, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to, to put them in there. Um, just wanna thank everyone for attending. A big thank you to Gina for this amazing um, cooking demo. Uh, just a reminder, the recording will be posted next week in the health library under um, lectures and events in the diabetes care pro program. And we hope to see you next month, the second Thursday, uh, December 12th at 5 p.m. And I will be presenting a fun demo, uh, Mixology Basics, Making Festive Low-Carb Cocktails and Mocktails. Uh, so have a great evening, everyone. And again, a happy World Diabetes Day. It was so wonderful to be with you all.